Good afternoon. Buongiorno. Bonjour. Buenas tardes. Ni hao. This is uh, Tom Mullen. I'm an American living in Bordeaux. This is the Vino Voices' third live stream on Premier Tasting. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about uh, 10 minutes, first of all. 10 minutes we're going to talk. 10 minutes we're going to do an interview. And uh, 10 minutes we're going to do tasting. So we have uh, seven different lines wind up. Two winemakers are going to speak to, and uh, welcome to uh, Geraldine. I see you there. Jane from uh, New York. This is great. Peter from New York also. Oh, very welcome here. Glad to have you here. So the first live stream, we talked about the five conditions necessary for an excellent vintage in Bordeaux. The second live stream, April 17th, we talked about San Emilion. We talked about the weather. We talked about the geology. We talked about the limestone plateau. This time, we're going to speak about weather and climate and why the vintages are getting better in Bordeaux, okay? So I uh, read portions of a book recently, and the book is titled Bordeaux, Its Wines in the Claret Country. It's written by Charles Cox, and it was published in 1846, okay? And in that book, he had put in someone else's notes about the vintages between 1815 and 1845. 30 years. So I read through all of the vintage notes, okay? And uh, here's what I found very interesting. Um, the, the weather sounded quite cold and horrible a lot of times, not always, but um, let me read you. For, for example, the year 1816, and I quote, continued rain this spring and summer, weather cold, the worst possible vintage. Many proprietors did not even gather their grapes and much wine was converted into vinegar. Vinegar, 1817, the next year. Wet and unfavorable weather, the vintage scanty and scarcely better than the last. 1824, rainy and unfavorable weather throughout the year, hard acid wines, one of the worst years. Oh my goodness, wow. So I went through those 30 years and I categorized them. I categorized them either as being good or excellent, and this is between 1815 and 1845 in Bordeaux. Good or excellent, mediocre or bad. And here's what I found. 36% of the vintages were good or excellent, 36% were mediocre, 30% were bad, okay? And then I thought, what about the last 11 years in Bordeaux that I am aware of and that I bought wine here? Okay, 2019, 2009 to 2019. Well, 2009, 2010, excellent, 2015, 2016, excellent, 2018 and 2019, excellent, 2012, 2014, okay, mediocre, 2011, 2013, 2017, perhaps we could consider it to be bad, okay? That's 56% of the vintages in the last 11 years were good or excellent, okay? 18% um, were mediocre and 27% were bad. So it seems that things have changed between the last 11 years and between 1815 and 1845, but there's more. Turns out, I read a book part of a book called Inventing Wine by Paul Lecox that was published in 2012. And he informed you of something fascinating. And that is that the guy who wrote that original book in 1846, the book has been repeatedly published every year and updated. And it's called the Bible of Bordeaux because it has the weather conditions for every year since 1815, basically. All right. And what the author said, in addition before 2012, was that between 1982 and 2012, which is a 30-year period, the, the, the wine quality was unparalleled compared to the last 200 years. So why is this? Why have the last 30 or 40 years, the wine has been so much better in Bordeaux than it has been the, the 160 years before that? Well, one reason, of course, you're gonna say climate change. Perhaps that may have something to do with it, but there is another reason, in fact, there are two other reasons. As far as climate change goes, yes, climate change uh, impacts wine sales and distribution, and it's done it before the Industrial Revolution, it's done it before the invention of the internal combustion engine, and it's, uh, it's done it before petroleum products were, were basically used in any way. For example, um, in the book Climate History and the Modern World, written by Hubert Lamb in 2012, he talked about how the 15th and 14th century the vintage in England was so poor that they started importing Bordeaux wines. 
Yeah, they've been making wine in England since the time of the Romans. But in the 15th and 14th century, we basically went from the uh, medieval warm period to the Little Ice Age. And according to the Royal Meteorological Society of England, between the year 1456, 1256, and 1431, from the annals and, and records they have, they found that the temperatures in England dip, went down, the rain increased, the cold increased, and because the vintages were not as good in England, they started buying more Bordeaux wines. Independent of the fact that, that uh, uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine had promoted the wines in the, in the 12th century, okay? So, climate change does have an impact on wines. Whether humans impact the climate or not is a different story. But what has improved the vintages in the last 30, 40 years? I wrote an article for Forbes about this in March, okay? And uh, it's called, Why the World's Wines Have Improved in the Last 30 Years, all right? It looks backward there. I spoke to Paul-Philippe Bascal, who works for Chateau Margaux. We had lunch a few years ago. Um, and I spoke to um, also Morgan Maurice, who works for Marciano Winery in Napa Valley, okay? And they told me that, uh, and, and Maureen Maurice has been, he's worked with such wineries as Chateau Brion, Chateau Petras, uh, Screaming Eagle, and Domaine Romani Conti. So the guy has experience. And what they told me is that the reason the wine is better in the last 34 years is two reasons. Number one, better viticulture. Now we trim the vines more strategically. We trim them on one side and not the other side, depending on the arc of the sun. And the more sun you give to parts of the vines, the more you burn off what are called isobutyl methopyroxenes. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about, okay? And uh, which gives sort of a green herbaceous green pepper taste to wines. And also, if you drop fruit, that is you cut fruit and you reduce the quantity of fruit, throwing grapes away, you can increase the quality of wines. And this is what people started doing in the 70s and 80s. It was sacrilege. No, how can you drop grapes? but they did, and it improved the quality of wines. Second thing, in the winery, the winemakers, they started improving their control over the thermodynamics of fermentation, which basically means, you know, uh, you're converting, the yeast is converting sugar into alcohol, and the better control you have over that, the better wines you're able to make, okay? So these two reasons, viticulture and better winemaking, have improved wines in the last 30 or 40 years. So does climate still matter? Of course it does. 2017, frost knocked 40% of the crop out of Bordeaux, wiped out wines all over Europe. 2018, hail decimated some of our neighbors 100% of their vines. 2019, you had uh, mildew, which knocked out 5 to 45% of, of the vines. Okay, so it still makes a big difference. And here is the important thing is, when I was speaking last week, remember I wanted to speak to some winemakers and they were not available? The moment I was speaking, there was a massive hailstorm in Saint Emilion on their vines. And so we're going to speak to them. I have to just find them here. Excuse me, I have to find them here. Hello, Corinne. Hello, Marlene. Hello, Lynn. Oh, this is so great seeing all you here. Ah, oh, Alex, very good. Oh, let's see. Um, we have uh, all these great people. Julie, very good. And let me just find my friends, Mr. Feesby, Geraldine. Sonia, okay, we're just looking for, excuse me, I shall find them. So we, uh, uh lucky B. Bordeaux. Okay, Volcanic, okay. Heritage Volcanic, sorry about this. Okay, let's see, are we able to find them? Well, perhaps they haven't joined us yet. Um, Heritage Volcanic, ah, okay, I don't see them yet. So I will chat for a while more, and if they join us, then... Uh, we'll have them. We'll have them chat with us. Okay. So, um, the winemakers are from they are Axel and Pierre, um, and uh, they are from uh, Cordurier. They're from uh, the uh, the Chateau Croix de Labri in Saint Emilion Organic Wines. It's fantastic. So hopefully they'll be soon. Meanwhile, let's get to tasting some wines. Okay. So we're focusing on right bank. We're focusing still on Saint Emilion. A little bit of Pomerol. All right. So we're going to start off with. Nothing from San Emilio. We're going to do Australian rules. In Australia, you go tasting with winemakers. The first thing they do is they have a beer. So before we 
tuck into these great red Saint-Emilion wines, we're going to start off with a lovely Provençal Rosé. My friends have told me I should line up the bottles here so that people can see the labels, which I shall dutifully do, okay? And then uh, let's have a look at this. This is uh, three grapes, um, Carignan, Morved, and uh, what's the other one? Carignan, Morved, and uh, it'll, it will come to me. Ooh, look at that beautiful light peach color, 2019. Provence Rosé is usually quite dry. Oh, yeah, so this is a nice tropical fruits in the nose. Beautifully fresh. Just took it out of the fridge. Nice and open, but firm. Great structure. Hold on. Mmm, very alive, very refreshing. You got a little bit of hint of mint in there also. And this is a Domaine de Tamarie. Excellent. This is, a, if you want to pair it with food, I would say... Um, maybe edamame, some uh, cashews, maybe even sushi. Our next wine, we're going to move into the <clears throat> the Chateau Monlo. Hold on a second, I just want to see who's here. Ah, uh, there's Stephen. Hello, Stephen from New York. Wendy, nice to have you here. Lynn, Marley, okay. So I'm just looking, and Maria Calvert, very good. We have some great, great people from all over the world here. Okay, so... We are now going to, and uh, Brant from Napa Valley, thank you. Okay, now we're going into Chateau Monlo, okay? This is a, a Grand Cru from, I realize it's background, I realize that. This is a Grand Cru from San Emilion, and this is a 90-10 blend of uh, Merlot and Cabernet Franc. As you know, we discussed last week, the dominant grapes on the right bank of Bordeaux Merlot and Cabernet Franc, sometimes a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, okay? Uh, let's have a little... Ooh, okay. Okay, you get three layers here. I get three layers. You get the uh, the fruits, you get the spice, and you get those elegant tannins, which are characteristic from 2019. Ooh, my goodness, really rich fruit, also characteristic of 2019. Now, let's taste this, baby. Beautiful um, aromas of charcoal. In the mouth, you get like little chocolate, little mocha, um, a little uh, lime acidity also. Uh, I would have this with a, a steak. I would have this with uh, um, even a, a magret de canard, um, a chicken, chicken breast. Our third wine, Chateau Moinvieux, another Saint Emilion Grand Cru, okay? And let me just check again if our friends been able to join. They may be working in the vineyard. Leslie! Hello, Leslie Barocco. Leslie has her own TV show and wine. She's an a, a, a amazing character. We spent time in the Canary Islands together. Leslie, lovely to have you here. And also Chateau Monlo. I just want to know you just chased, but we just tasted your wine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. This is an... This is a 74-26% Merlot Cabernet Franc uh, Cabernet Sauvignon blend. So let's have a look at this one. Let's see how it goes. All right. Again, the 2019 vintage uh, appears to be excellent. And the three characteristics of that vintage, which I will note, are the following. Um, n number one is deep, deep energetic uh, fruit, okay? Number two is that elegant tannic streak. And the third I've noticed is a little bit of time, a little bit of time, you get that kitchen garden um, herbs. You get a little bit of tarragon, sage, basil, mint. It's just every now and then, a little hint of that. But it's distinct and it's beautiful. Okay. Hello, Geraldine. Okay, Claude de la Brie. Our friends are on here. Bonjour. Okay, here we go. Voila. Um, hi, no, no. Claude de la Brie. Uh, report, comment, hide live. Well, I'm not quite sure how do we get you guys on here. Okay. Um, doesn't seem to be hide live video, pin comment, report, comment, uh, cancel. Not quite sure why we can't get you guys to join. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll try again in a minute. Uh, anyway, so the Chateau Montvieux. 
Okay, so this one's a little more guarded, a little more uh, uh, shy. It'll leave a couple of years. Um, but you have uh, blackberry, you have uh, even peanuts, uh, uh, you've got uh, uh, black pepper. Mmm, beautiful. I'd like this with a T-bone steak. Thank you very much. Um, lovely, uh, lovely acidity, rounded tannins, nice, uh, nice length also. Um, very enjoyable. Definitely have this one with barbecue. Now we're going to try it once more. Let's see. Quadlibri view. Okay. Go live. Quadlibri. Okay. Think we're waiting for that. All right. Okay. So, let's try once more. Ah! Bonjour! Bonjour, Tom! Pierre! Comment ça va? Bien, bien, bien. Très bien. Ah, Merci beaucoup. Excellent. Ah. Ça va bien? Super, très très bien, ah, merci. Ok. Dis-moi, tell us about, tell us a little about, first of all, the little hailstone episode, and I hope it didn't damage too much your crop. And second of all, the 2019 vintage, because I tasted last week and it is superb. Superb. Yes. Thank you. Ok. Thanks, well, sorry for not being with you last Friday, and uh, I review on podcast your, uh, your video, <laughs> so it was very late on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, because indeed in saint emilion and not only in saint emilion but in places in Bordeaux, Zariad, and the Entre Mer, yeah. uh, there was quite some uh, hail storms. Uh, we were in already in alert by 5 p.m. Uh, and we part of a group of different uh, wine chateaux uh, south to saint emilion in the saint sulpice uh, south uh, nearby the river. Right. So we jumped together in order to launch balloon. Uh, to try to avoid the hailstorm, but uh, it was unusual at that time of the year, you know. It's mm. uh, very rare, I think. I discussed mm. with some people, and they said they haven't seen that for many, many years. Okay. So we had three times uh, during all the night hailstorm, so we launched balloons. And I think it works quite well, but not enough because we are not... Uh, so many is to use that. Uh, right. I wish right. tomorrow we will more. Sure, but we we've been it a little bit. I saw I saw the photographs. The hailstones look huge. What? Uh, how many losses percent do you think you might have sustained, or in that region? Uh, uh, in the region, I won't say the numbers in the region. I know some friends of us. Uh, yeah. They almost lost uh, hundred percent of the crop. So uh -huh. that's uh, that's okay. amazing and that's big. Uh, but for us. So we don't have to complain so so much. Uh, we estimate with Axel, uh, she went to the vineyard and check, and I was with her on Saturday morning. I would say around 15%. Okay, well, that's not that. bad. That's not bad. Uh, that's I think okay. you can live with that. It could have been worse. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear worse, that. But the thing is, on the plateau in St. Christophe yeah. de Bard, where usually we don't face so many hailstorms, we've been yeah. quite touched also in those places too. So, okay. well, I'm sorry to hear nature, about that. You know? Yeah. Well, you have three different vineyards. Tell us a little bit about the uh, the 2019 vintage. Um, uh, let me, I just uh, told them your your wine is organic and uh, you've yeah. owned it since 2013. I think uh, Robert Parker has raved about your wines, and certainly I'm going to rave about them also. Um, tell us a little about the 2019 vintage. Well, uh, it's, I think it's a good idea to, to talk about 2019, especially uh, nowadays where most mm. of the people are, uh, we have all to stay home, right. but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. we can taste wines in that same time. And, uh, mm. you know, we, we took over on the estate, as you said, Tom, uh, in 2013, and Croix de Labrie was among the origin of the garagist uh, wineries, but... Um, right. As soon as we met with Axel in the U.S., in Washington State, in Seattle. Okay. And very much concerned about environment. And as soon mm -hmm. as we took over on the estate, uh, Axel decided to right away turn 100% green. So okay. So we went to 200% organic. And you can right. imagine with uh, 2013. Oops. Yes. <laughs> was not so easy. But we, we went deep, uh, deeper in this uh, philosophy. And uh, we decided to... Uh, to go deeper in the terroir. So one terroir, one climate, one wine. So we have 
uh, the plateau of St. Christophe des Bardes with the clay and chalk terroir and asteris limestones and down the slopes of Pavi where we produce Chateau Croix de l'Abri. So this is a single vineyard. And uh, in Saint-Sulpice, the Ferrance, where we have been quite more heated uh, by the hailstorm last Friday, where yes. we produce Chapelle de l'Abri. Uh, 100% organic and biodynamic also. So that's quite very interesting. And concerning 2019 vintage, well, you already taste uh, <laughs> a lot of wines already. <laughs> yeah. Than us because we, we stay home. Enfin, inside yes. the cellar. Well, I'm, uh, I have some good friends, fortunately, for taking <laughs> care of me. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. Uh, well, you know, 2019, uh, I think it's a very beautiful vintage in Bordeaux. Uh, it's not because we produce wine, but really, uh, I think it's a magical vintage, uh, a very amazing, multidimensional. Uh, the growing season was not easy at all, uh, because during the winter, uh, I'm sure you remember that. Right. It was nice, but quite humid. The flowering uh, was beautiful, but we were quite a little bit afraid because after we had rainfalls, so we start to have a mild age and cooler in the vineyard. Okay. But then suddenly, uh, Mother Nature appears as always. Uh, yeah. The heat, the heat came during the summer, but sometimes in some places uh, a little bit too warm, I would say, yeah. for July. Uh, we had 39 degrees as far as I remember um, around That's the right. of July. But then at the end of July, uh, we had some few rainfalls. Uh, the Veraison August was nice, warm, but still uh, some few rains that was okay. But never forget uh, that for all uh, vignerons in the world, uh, and especially in Bordeaux, uh, it's a marathon. And the key, yeah. the key is really September and October. Right. Uh, we had a beautiful September with uh, nice weather, cool nights, very cold nights, and. Uh, few rainfalls at the end of September, so I would say uh, 2019 uh, on the right bank uh, and generally in Bordeaux, I think it's a very classical vintage, beautiful. Uh, 2018 was already a, a, a nice one, but I, I think uh, the 19 is really uh, on the fruity side, the, yeah. the blackberries, the black yeah. fruits. A nice tenants depending yeah. from from the places we, you are in Saint Emilion and I know I have some friends on the left bank in the Medoc and they all told me that the Cabernet Sauvignon are oh wow big yeah yeah uh, sexy uh, but uh, we very much focus with Axel because of this growing season and the heat we had uh, in Saint Emilion in Bordeaux uh, we have chosen to go on harvesting quite early to be okay. first uh, okay. around the 20th September. So that really to focus on the freshness on the tenants. Okay. On the wine, which I think for my point of view, I think uh, 2019 will be uh, 2001. Uh, nice. Beautiful vintage. Yeah, that's really a good version also. Okay. Thank you so much. I My appreciate pleasure. it, Pierre, and I hope that uh, I hope that things go well. Sorry about the losses due to hail, but uh, I, I've enjoyed that last week, and I'm going to enjoy more after lockdown. Okay? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much for everything you do. Tom. Okay. Merci beaucoup. And uh, give my best to Axel. I will. Promise. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Okay. Au revoir. Okay. So you heard about the weather live. Um, they lost 15%. Serious hail. They sent me some photographs. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Le Commanderie. Okay, this is, uh, I believe this is a 75-25% bond of Merlot Cabernet Franc. Here we go. Oh, very earthy on the nose. You know, it's uh, you got like a red ochre clay. You got a bit of uh, soil. Very earthy. Let's see what it's like in the, in the mouth. Very rich, um, has that seam of, of tannins and uh, dark black berries, okay? Um, this I would match with uh, definitely barbecue, uh, green peppers, uh, um, 
carrots, uh, and uh, perhaps even uh, perhaps even a, chi a chicken. Again, a Magare de Canard, perhaps. Okay, Pomerol. Pomerol is a small area right next to San Emilion. It doesn't have a classification system. It's only 2.5 miles in area, square miles, or 6.25 hectares in area, but it produces some phenomenal wines. This is 100% Merlot from Pomerol. Pomerol is also where Chateau Petrus is located. Okay, so let's taste this. And, ooh. Oh, this has got the like um, boysenberries and blackberries on the nose. Very fruity, very open. Ooh, very generous. Oh, this is going to taste good. I can tell. Oh, this is. Um, it has mocha. It has a scent of brick on the nose. It has mocha in the mouth. Um, chocolate. Um, if I were going down a dark alley at 2 and 30 in the afternoon, that is the wine I would like to go to. Assertive Tannins. Okay. Next one, Clos de Bord. I've had this uh, every year for the last few years. It's by Coralie de Bord, the daughter of Hubert de Bord on Chateau Angeles. And uh, every year I taste it, it gets better. And every year, but it, it started off great. Okay. Um, and this one is an... an 85, 10, 5 blend of, of uh, Merlot Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon. Let's, woo, this one's got a lot of elegance on the nose, okay? Woo, very uh, subtle, seductive, and uh, suave. Okay. That's a beauty. That's like... Um, it's like when you know you're in college or high school and there's some woman who could dress very elegantly and she was always smiling, laughing, but she also got the best grades. It's like, how did you do that? Oh my gosh. And the final line, I'm gonna make some room here. This is also 100% Clos Bertenu. This is uh, from Montan saint emilion which is a satellite appellation of saint emilion so let's have a, a taste of this, and then I'll see if you have any questions, and I'll take a few more points. But San Emilion wines, Pomerol, phenomenal altogether. Oh, this one's really light fruit on the nose, like raspberries, raspberry explosion, okay? Jumping into my nostrils and saying, drink me, hold on, I shall. Mmm. Phenomenal structure. Um, it's like a bit of a uh, charcoal um, and uh, licorice. Uh, it has all that uh, those black, beautiful tastes also. Okay, so here are the bottles. If you want a list of the wines, let me know. If you want to go to my website, vinovoices.com. If you want to come to another live stream, I'm doing it tomorrow. Instead of Zoom, I'm doing an Instagram of Armenian wines. 45 minutes, I'm interviewing three Armenian winemakers. And I've got their wines here, and I'm drinking it. Great people, great wine. Thursday, I'm doing another live stream, same time. It's going to be Left Bank, okay? So we got the Medoc wines. Um, any other questions you may have, please send to me. Thank you for joining in. And uh, uh, I will send you the wine names if you like. What else? Um, okay, there will be future tastings, and uh, I just want to have a quick... Look at who else is online, so I can thank you. Hello, Martin from from the UK. Glad to have you here. And uh, Yulin, nice to have you here also. Brandt, of course, from Napa. Um, Laurie, hello, Laurie. Nice to have you here. Great. Henrique, appreciate it. Uh, Alice, bonjour. Okay. Um, so we have people from California, France, UK, Italy all over the place. Anyway, uh, Melissa, nice for joining. It's uh, 620 Wine. I hope that was a, a good overview. Great speaking to, to uh, Pierre. Unfortunately, they lost, while we were speaking last week, lost their crop to hail. So what have you learned? Okay, here's what you've learned is um, winemaking today is more insulated from the vagaries of weather. However, the, the weather still has a, a huge impact. However, better viticulture, better winemaking means 
better wines altogether. Over 50% of the vintages of Bordeaux nowadays are good or excellent quality, whereas before 40 years ago, 35% of the vintages were of good or excellent quality. Merci beaucoup. Thank you for joining in. Have a great evening. Enjoy your wine, and uh, please come back either tomorrow night or Friday night or next week. Au revoir.